Nerd Nerds! Happy Sunday! It is May the 24th, and we are here to talk all about Howl's Moving Castle. If this is your first time joining us for a movie night, welcome. This is a new thing that we do as of 2020. Um, we shifted things around, and so now every quarter we do a game night, a movie night, and a book. So one for each month. Uh, so this month is Howl's Moving Castle, and we're just going to be chatting about the movie, how we feel about it. It looks like there's about four people here, which is par for the course for a, a book club movie night. We're so glad you're here. Um, yeah, give us a, a shout out in the discussion section if you're here, if you're stoked to talk about Howl's Moving Castle. Do we rate movies? <laughs> Okay, sure, so let's do, do it. Not. <laughs> let's rate the movie, starting with Kelly, <laughs> out of five stars. Five stars, I think. I actually just finished it this afternoon, so I haven't really like sat with it yet, but I was fully immersed. It was really enjoyable. It wasn't quite what I was expecting, I don't think, but it was my first yeah. Studio Ghibli movie. And I had this high expectations. It was my first one, too. Oh, my God. I'm so happy that this is the first Studio Ghibli movie. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a very accessible first one. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> I think for creative types it is. If you're mm -hmm. very straight laced, but not necessarily. Well, it's saying, like compared to all the other Studio Ghibli movies, oh, okay. like, this I is a good entry. Yeah, it's a good okay. entry. Well, yeah, well. Okay. exactly. <laughs> all right, Rachel, what about you? Sorry, my cat just came over to start yelling at me. So if the screen starts tipping, it's because she's rubbing her face over my computer. Um, <laughs> Uh, I give this a 4.5 stars. Yeah. I, I love this movie. I think it's so fun and whimsical. Um, and I will gladly rewatch it anytime. Erin? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to say 4 out of 5. Um, I would just knock off a point for the end, which I felt was like, like I don't know, not random, but maybe like a little rushed or something. Like the mm -hmm. part with the turn up head thing I was like, surprise, I'm a prince. So I was like, <laughs> and I, I love, love turn up head. And I'm in love with you. I was like, okay. <laughs> and I will be back for the sequel where we will have a love triangle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here for it. I feel like turn up head could put up a good fight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Emma. Um, for me, it's probably like I'm just gonna go with five stars. <laughs> like I think it, like, there are things about like yeah, like the pacing and some of the storylines that like aren't perfect, but it's just such an enjoyable movie and it's very much like a comfort movie for me. Um, that it just gets full five stars because I just yeah. I really enjoy it. So yeah, uh, I'm probably like Rachel, like a four and a half out of five. I loved it. I could easily see it being a fun comfort film. I don't know why I hadn't watched it before. Now I feel like. <laughs> It was, it's one of those movies where it's just always been around so like just didn't get to it and like I knew I would enjoy it so I'm glad that we watched it. It was really fun. The beginning took me a little bit to get into uh, particularly the part where they like fly down onto the roof and he says that's my girl. <laughs> <laughs> you just met. <laughs> um, but it was fun. I really liked it. Um, and once, uh, once Sophie was old, I was all in. <laughs> like a sassy old lady just yes. going around doing whatever she wants, berating have you, people. Have you guys read the book? No. I have. No. I read it a long time ago, but I was remembering a few parts from it. But I definitely yeah. enjoyed the Sophie as a grumpy old lady in the book as well. <laughs> Yeah, I love the book. It's really good. Yeah. I recently listened to the audiobook, and I'm pretty sure it was abridged which I didn't realize until I had finished it. Like, this was too short. And I feel like that maybe helped me round up because I felt like I was filling in some of the gaps with what I knew from the book. Of like, at the beginning, it's like, oh, these are our sisters, and blah, 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 blah. And like, the end, like, oh, I know who Turnip Head is and all that, so. Mm -hmm. yeah. We had someone in the comments who pointed out technically they hadn't just met, which I assume is something that's fleshed out more in the books. Probably, yeah. I can't remember, but. Because yeah, they, like, talk really briefly at the beginning, like, everyone knows who Howl is. Mm -hmm. And he's like yeah. serious. In the book, they definitely met before, but I thought Sophie was a lot younger. So I don't remember the context. But they definitely met really before. Remember. And I thought that that's my girl scene was this replacement for that in the movie, but maybe not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I rewatched it this week because I've 
I've watched the movie and I've read the book and both of them it had been long enough that I was like, I couldn't remember what was in the movie and what was in the book. So I'm glad mm -hmm. I rewatched it. Cause there were some things I was like, do they touch on this or not? Cause like Howell has like a whole backstory in the book. So there's a lot more mm -hmm. about him. Yeah, I really want to read the book now. Cause I haven't actually read anything by Diana Wynne Jones either. Yeah. So that trilogy are the only books I've read by her. <laughs> I've read uh, some other ones by her and she's, she's well, she's, prolific and very very good writer as well yeah, yeah i feel like if i because i haven't read the book but i feel like if i did read the book it would fill in a lot of the things that i docked marks from for the movie oh, definitely um so i mean you know probably should i just never read middle grade but mm -hmm. i should get myself in, around to doing that mm -hmm. um we had a follow-up uh do you mean the part in the movie where he defended her against those creepy guys yeah where they like meet in the alley and uh he like saves her from the creepy guys and then the shadow dudes in top hats which i love the top hat um they're and, formal shadows so they're creepy but classy <laughs> yeah and uh then he drops her off on the roof after they're flying and he's all like you're a natural and he drops her off on the roof and he goes that's my girl and then leaves yeah. Which I'm like, it, like later it makes sense, but at the time you're like, well, that seems weird, but okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and that was like the only part, and I think it was because I wasn't all in on the like the vibe of the movie yet. But that was mm -hmm. the only part I was like, <laughs> <It's good laughs> you. yeah. <laughs> It's very uh, I, like early two thousands fantasy protagonist. Uh, oh my god! Love yeah. interest dropping in, saving you, and then being like sassy one liner, and then leaving. <laughs> I had oh to laugh because I was he so he saved her from the like soldier people, and then he's like, "You're with me now." And then there was all these creepy shadow guys, and I was like, "I think I would take my chances with the sh oh, the god. soldiers." <laughs> <laughs> Uh, like those goo creatures are the only thing that I absolutely despise about Studio Ghibli movies because they're in every single one. That is like really? the creep yeah. factor of Studio Ghibli movies that I hate them. Is Princess uh, Mononoke uh, mm -hmm. Studio Ghibli? Okay, yes. I've seen that one. That is That's decidedly like, uh, weirder. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Also such a good film. Yeah. But yeah, it's in like everything. And I'm like, can we please stop with the goo monsters? I hate them so much. <laughs> <laughs> but at least in this one, they were classy. So, you know. <laughs> I love them. Formal, <laughs> formal goo monster. Honestly, more goo monsters, please. <laughs> oh, we've got. Megan's just gonna start writing goo monsters into all her books. No, now Rachel yeah. can't read them anymore. <laughs> I revealed uh, my weakness. Oh no. <laughs> we've got N. Griswold is here. Said five stars. This is the first anime film I've seen, and I'm mad at myself for putting it off for so long. Mm -hmm. And then, uh. With Jennifer is also here. My first Ghibli movie too. I enjoyed it story wise. It reminded me of Beauty and the Beast, Shrek, and the Frog Prince. Mm -hmm. uh, I yeah, my husband and I watched it together, and we were talking about how, especially in the beginning, we got big like Disney's The Princess and the Frog vibes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah. Well, she does kiss everything, I noticed. <laughs> like, turn up head was just by chance because she literally kisses everything, like, including the demon, uh, the fire demon at the end. I was like, oh, burn your lips off. <laughs> <laughs> burn your lips off. <laughs> yes, Calcifer. Also, uh, the, I just, I love the, I can't forget the life of me remember his name, but the voice actor that plays Billy him in Crystal. the dub, Billy Crystal, yeah, is like yeah. a perfect for that. It's so it's funny. Yeah. It's such a, it's a very like star studded voice. Right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Including like, I was like looking it up because like I knew it was like Christian Bale and everything, but I didn't realize that Markle is like a very young Josh Hutcherson. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's wild. Yeah. It's a little PETA. I had yeah. to, I had oh, to look right? up the, um, uh, the flame demon because I was like, why is why is this voice so familiar? Like, ah, yeah. like, with, like four with the foreign dub films where you're just like, this voice is I know this voice, and then surprise, yeah. <laughs> it's Batman. <laughs> uh, uh, we had uh, writing skills. One hundred and one said, "Kiss all the villains." <laughs> Except for the Witch of the Waste, because no thank oh, you. <laughs> so annoying. The worst. 
That was uh that was weird. <laughs> that was another part that well Yeah, watching, she was like, a weird addition for me in the movie. Mm -hmm. Like the fact that she was with them afterwards was like, no, I don't like her. Yeah. Kick her out of the castle. <laughs> well, I, I, I kind of like her after. Like, like when like her they after adopted her. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's so part of that. And she's just this like kind of senile old lady. I know. Yeah. Like, all right. Well, I guess it's the Studio like, Ghibli movie, so you can't just like kill people off. Yeah. But when they're both trying to get up the stairs and like Sophie gets there first, so there's like cheering <laughs> her on and telling her not to quit. I'm like, this is adorable. <laughs> I I feel like a lot of the elements of this movie was like, oh, that's weird. And then, oh, that's kind of adorable. <laughs> that was like the thought process for a lot of it. Yeah, I have the same. majority of Studio Ghibli movies. <laughs> and I do think it's interesting that like you kind of start out the movie with like, oh, the Witch of the Waste is the villain. But then like she isn't really like, halfway Clearly through. Clearly not. Like, yeah. in a way, and there's like someone else. To worry about. I, I love yeah. how weirdly she was drawn. Like the Witch of the Waste, like it, when she comes into a room, she like completely fills it up. And then when you're like looking at her carriage, it's just, she's just like a giant face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is so weird. But I like it too. Like, she's creepy. I don't know. That was not my favorite. <laughs> at first, like not knowing anything going in as to like what was going to happen, it felt like. Oh, so the fat person is the bad guy. I did have so that thought. Yeah. I think that is kind of like an an issue with Studio Ghibli in general. Is that there tends to like I I've only seen a few of their movies. I haven't seen very many, but like there often is some element of like like um like greed and like um yeah. trying to find another word. But yeah, like what? overindulgence, you know, is what? like this terrible thing. Like in spirited away, I think that the characters' parents get turned into like pigs or something. Like there's a, there's always something like weirdly sort of fat phobic in their movies, and you're like, ah. well, so. I know that for Howl's Moving Castle, it wouldn't surprise me if Diana and Jones in general had some of that like. Um, what like Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, yeah. like Matilda style, like all of the bad guys are fat or like super mm. stocky and tall, like Mrs. Trench, whatever her trench bowl or whatever her name was. Yeah. Like yeah. it's very old fashioned yeah. children's fantasy. It's very classic yeah. children's fantasy. The villain is a fat person. Mm. So yeah. Yeah. I loved when she was an old lady though. <laughs> yeah. It was great. She was cute. Um, until oh, I she saw, stole uh, the heart, like, <laughs> excuse you. I, it I, happens, you know, no. from time to time. <laughs> and I, I felt like it wasn't random that she did that. Like, it was very well established that she had, like, been in love once. And then, I, yeah. if I'm interpreting it right, that person was Howl. And so then she, like, is like, I'm going to steal his heart. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there's also some, like, at the beginning of the movie, the people in the town are always talking about, like, how like Howl steals girls' hearts and like wizards in general steal young girls' hearts. So like the fact that like the witch is like trying to steal like a young man's heart, like is this the first time or does she like steal young men's hearts for like her magic or something? So yeah. yeah. It's very Naomi Novik. <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah. What a great movie. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and that's the chat. <laughs> that's yes. the I also saw something online that was a joke about like, oh, everyone is like super obsessed with Howell and like saying he's so handsome, but actually he's just a boy who dyed his hair and then got sad. And I was like, okay. <laughs> yeah, this is not relatable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the part where he starts turning into like goo <laughs> because he's so distressed. Oh, his bad hair dude. Like, this is deeply that's relatable. The point of wondering if you aren't beautiful. <laughs> I mean, we got the best like underlying theme, but at the same time, very funny. Who, who among us has not had a bad haircut or dye that has made us want to turn to goo and just disappear into the floor? Yeah, I, like uh, I really liked in that part too. I assume it was intentional, but when he comes out and he's freaking out, he sounds like Billy Crystal to the point where at first I thought it was Calcifer coming out. Oh, like no, I, I didn't know that. I somehow gotten turned into a human. And uh, so for me, it was like, oh yeah, he kind of sounded like Calcifer at that part. Remember when they were like, oh. BT Dubs, this is his heart. Interesting. Oh, interesting. Oh. I didn't pick up on that apparently. Oh. <laughs> I was wondering like, 
maybe you guys will have insight into this, but like she was kind of slowly changing back into herself, wasn't she? Through mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, because I was like, I'm seeing a lot of like her switching back and forth between old and young. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What yeah. I noticed was that anytime she started to let her guard down. Yeah, I noticed that. Herself. Or like when she would have like heightened emotions of some mm -hmm. kind, she would slip back into her like old old face or young face. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Her old so, young face. Yeah. Her old young face. Yeah. <laughs> so one of the I thought that was like kind never, of like explained within the story, but I kind of liked that about it. Like Yeah. I was kind of I assuming it, it was that like the love is breaking the curse kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, I think I think that's what we're supposed to believe. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's very much a story where like not a lot of things are like explained on. And I think that's part of its charm in some ways that like you kind of just get to like finish it and like interpret it in your yeah. own way because they don't like sit yeah. you down and explain it. You know, yeah, like they never like, they're like, this is why her curse was broken. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is why Howell is turning into a raven. You're like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. There was something. I feel like they talked about it in the book, but it was more the letting her guard down and like she was the one keeping the spell up to kind of protect herself kind of thing. But it wasn't completely implicit. Yeah. Like she has the power to break her own curse. Yeah. And I felt like that came across without them like straight up telling us that that was mm -hmm. what was going on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, because um, I rewatched it with my husband who's seen it once before. And we were like talking afterwards about how like it's interesting because you can kind of see like different storytelling styles from different cultures. Like in more of like a Western culture, it would be like you need to explain why yeah. she turned young, like, you know, like and <laughs> everything needs to be explained or whatever. And like, the focus would have been more on her and the curse and breaking the curse. But, like, that isn't really the focus. Like, the focus of the story is more just about, like, her and Howell, like, growing as people and not mm -hmm. necessarily, like, them, like, breaking their curse or separating from the demon. Like, those are just things that happen as they mm. grow and, like, discover yeah. themselves. Yeah, I love that Sophie, she's like, well, guess I'm an old lady now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, she just goes on her way. Go. I'm like, all right, lady, you go. <laughs> You're even talking about, like, when she leaves home, like, um, like with like in like a a more modern American fantasy story, she would leave home to go find a way to break the curse. Mm -hmm. But that isn't what happens. She just is like, well, I can't stay here anymore. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what you can do with my curse. Like, yeah. Not like my mom to see I'm an old lady. Yeah. <laughs> I better just go. She doesn't go like looking for Howell to break her curse or anything. You know, she's just sets off and happens on an mm -hmm. adventure. Yeah. Like you all you saying that and saying like the different ways that different cultures portray a story this is very story based whereas in western culture it probably would be more character based so i but feel like it's more of, character based the movie is more character based <laughs> yeah definitely but it kind of it does the thing where it's not like i'm sophie and i need to go break this curse and i'm gonna set off and do it. it's kind of like here is a story about these two people this curse thing is like an inciting incident but it's also about other people and like how they're interfering with people's lives and the curses and stuff Mm -hmm. Which I didn't really think about. But yes. I also thought it was interesting to, um, like a huge theme for Sophie was like facing things that she was afraid of. And the second she like becomes this old woman, she's like, well, things aren't quite so scary when you're old. So how about I just, I have to go. Why don't I head out into the place that typically scares me? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, which I really liked. Her mother was the absolute worst. <laughs> oh, you're old. Okay, bye. I have this new husband. No follow up question. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, you say you're fine? Okay. Yeah. And I get that's probably like part of the world is that like weird curses happen and stuff. So maybe she genuinely was just like, oh, so you're old now. Okay. <laughs> I think that is it because if you like, I noticed how casual she was the first time she saw Turnip Ed. She was like, cool, bouncing around scarecrow thing that's following me. Like, go stand in a field or something. It wasn't like, holy shit, what is this thing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, you're living in a world, there's literally a walking castle that just, like, sometimes appears at the edge of your town. Yeah. And, like, oh, don't yeah. get too close to that handsome man. He's going to steal your heart. And people are like, oh, you're old now. Okay. <laughs> But mm -hmm. I uh, got really strong like Baba Yaga vibes with the like chicken feet. The chicken feet. Yeah. <laughs> that whole castle is so freaking cool. 
it was just uh like it's so whimsical and weird and mechanical and i love it so much mm -hmm. it's like the better more fairy tale version of mortal engines <laughs> <laughs> in general i like the aesthetic of the world but it's like there's magic mm -hmm. but there's also like airplanes and well yeah a big part yeah. of it was about the war and you're like yeah. oh okay I thought I this still, was gonna be a fun story. <laughs> yeah, I still do, I'm still not quite sure what the war was like all about, or who was fighting who, or what. I don't know if you were supposed to really know. It's Turniped's kingdom. He's the prince of a kingdom, and he okay. went missing because he was cursed. And right. so, I guess the other kingdom blamed the kingdom Sophie lives in, and so oh, okay. they're like at war. Yeah. Did so that's why at the end he's like, at the end he's like, I'm gonna go home and tell my dad. Call <laughs> <up this> morning. <laughs> Well, I'm pretty, and someone, if anyone's watching this, like, feel free to correct me, but I'm fairly sure that Miyazaki is either a veteran of World War II or that he worked closely with people who, who like, supported the war effort. So a lot of war things are in the majority of Studio Ghibli movies, and war is a really big theme. So even at, in places like this, you're like, oh, wow, we suddenly have bombs. That's mm -hmm. interesting. But, it, like, you know, it does make sense. And it's very, like, nature reclaiming things. And war is, like, a big backdrop in a lot of the a lot of the movies. He was I a just... child during World War II. Okay, there we go. I'm, like, 95% sure that there's a war in the books, too. Or in the book. Mm -hmm. I assume mm -hmm. that, like, that was touched on at some point but i was like part of the issue is like i watched it so late that i was like running around doing other stuff but i was like i'm just gonna turn it up really loud and hope i catch most of what's going on yeah yeah and it wasn't one of those things it wasn't like spelled out it was just kind of here it is yeah good luck i didn't like at the time i was watching it's not something i like really need to know like it's only like curious afterwards but at the time i was like okay they're bombing each other they're fighting wizards are involved somehow cool like yeah. let's do this and it's like and once it's again like, they're not that important to the plot it's just more yeah. about like how howl is responding to it like with him yeah. refusing mm -hmm. to be a part of it there were some like statements like i do feel like in part it was intentional that the war felt so chaotic that you like didn't even really understand what they were fighting over like with the part where howl brings down the the airship with all the bombs on it and Sophie is like well is that our side or the other one he's like it really doesn't matter yeah. <laughs> that thing is full of bombs yeah. hmm. <gasps> um we've got a um we've got some interesting comments on like what goes on in the book versus in the movie um Ali Unicorn Fan 85 said in the book, Cal is the one who actually breaks the spell versus her breaking it herself. Um, and we've got Misty Cakes here too. Hello. <laughs> Thank you all for joining us. Um, if you came in late, we're talking about Howl's Moving Castle, the movie. Um, Misty Kate said, I found similar themes from Howl's Moving Castle in The Cat Returns. It's a, oh. a movie wreck. That's a movie wreck. It's right? so good. It's so oh, cute. It's very weird. <laughs> but yeah, now that I think about it, there is a little bit of and it's same like girl taken away into a you know magical realm and like trying to help save the main character and whims whimsicalness and stuff. It's very weird though, just be warned. <laughs> um I was thinking of uh, the the big monster boy energy that Howl had and how a lot of the books I've been reading lately feel like they could have been heavily inspired <laughs> by Howl. Um, the one that comes to mind first is Wicked Saints, where the guys are yeah. like, <laughs> I thought that too. Um, which I really enjoyed Wicked Saints, so I like that too. Um, and yeah. Um, what did you all think about the castle? Like what was your favorite part of the castle itself? Because it has all these different components to it. Definitely the different like portals. Yeah, the doors. Oh, really cool. Yeah. Really oh, cool. yeah, very uh, Shades of Magic series. Yeah, yeah. it's very. Yeah. Even I more like... so in the book. <laughs> really? <laughs> There's more like portal stuff in the I wonder how much of it was like an inspiration for V.E. Schwab or if it was just a coincidence. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Also, um, my one of my favorite parts mostly happens in the castle, but the the dog that follows yeah. Sophie around all the time, <laughs> which we're pretty sure is hell, but I just love him so much. <laughs> There's so much sass drawn into that dog face that I didn't realize was possible. Also, he's a spy dog. Yes. Yes. He's but then the dog just hops on the plane and they're like, you're probably not a spy anymore. <laughs> it's kind of will put back in until the very end. So he's not yeah. a good dog. Because <laughs> he's on their side. Yeah. Yes. With the castle, I loved how much Calcifer like ran it when Sophie told him that like she likes his spark. He got all enthusiastic and the castle yeah. was faster. <laughs> yeah. Um. I loved Howl's room, how it was just yes. full of shiny things, mm -hmm. very crow-like. And then like, that weird tunnel thing. Oh, yeah. Like This is a point where I, I remember watching it for the first time, and even now, I guess, after seeing it a couple times, but like looking at that and being like, oh man, I wish I could know more about that, which is probably why I should read the book. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I was like, ooh, that backstory sounds real cool, because no one with a room like that is normal. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I had a question, Wicked Saints by whom? Uh, it's by Emily A. Duncan. Uh, the sequel. Ruthless just God. Came Did it just come out? It came, uh, came out in May. I just got it delivered to me yesterday. It's very exciting. <laughs> yes. Hell yeah. <sighs> we were talking a little bit about like how random it was at the end when Turnip Head is like, I'm in love with Sophie. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> And do you think it's like kind of like rushed and random there just because you know it's like a two hour movie but um, I do appreciate that it's like she's his true love enough that it like breaks his curse but like she doesn't love him back like I think you don't see mm. a lot of that where it's like he loves her enough that she can break his curse but like she is not re like um, requited and also that like he's fine with that too <laughs> Because <laughs> we were watching it, and um, and my husband was like, "Wow, so he's just like totally fine with it and leave." And I'm like, "That's actually really cool that he's not like, no, you have to love me back, you know." He's like, "How should choose between us?" Yeah, he's like, "She loves somebody else. That's just what happens." And like, like what a good man. <laughs> yeah. In the movie, he does good say, friend. "Like I'll be back after the whole war thing." So he just has <laughs> priorities straight. Is what it is. <laughs> True. I like to use my head cannon to think that it's just like their friendship love broke the. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, see, because me and my, I'm like, oh, there'll be like a poly threesome. Cool. <laughs> I, think the, I mean, I think it's the witch who says, oh, it looks like your true love loves somebody else. And he's just kind of like, oh, well, yeah. it happens. <laughs> I got to go home anyway. <laughs> what a guy. <laughs> yes. I, I love that he continues to hop off on his stick. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Do we know how long he was turnip head? A really long time, but I don't know if it says specifically how long. Mm -hmm. I think it's been like years. He's just so used to the stick that yeah. he yeah. still uses it as a mode of transportation. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, surely this is faster than my legs. <laughs> this is how people travel, right? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe how like en enchanted it for him so he could get home faster. I don't know. Maybe so he didn't have to like, actually make the stick hop. Yeah. Just go. Because he like flies, he's like hopping through the air on it. So right. Yeah. Um. Yeah, we've got uh, Jennifer Daniels said maybe Turnip Head needed to learn to accept unrequited love slash platonic friendship. Oh, I love head. it. That does seem like a very Studio Ghibli thing to do. <laughs> mm -hmm. Honestly, I just like saying Turnip Head. So mm -hmm. really. <laughs> It's a great I love game. him. Yes. <laughs> like how everybody loves him. We're just like, he's so cool. He didn't say a thing the entire movie, but he's, he's, he's just been there. What a great <laughs> friend. Highly reliable. He went and got her cloak. I was like, oh. I, oh, yeah. What right. a good guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because when you first see him, I since I didn't know anything about the movie going in, it felt very like, what's going to happen? This is already more steampunk than I was expecting. What else is going to be going on? And so when Turnip Head shows up, uh, my husband and I just looked at each other and we're like, is this going to get scary? <laughs> 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 A 
literally i said the same thing when Tur turnip head she like turns and he's following her i was like oh crap what the hell is this? <laughs> no one this was horror this is a horror <laughs> movie <laughs> get back <laughs> hmm. um yeah so uh did anyone have a, a specific favorite part of the the movie a favorite scene I do really like when we get the like backstory scene of like how Howl and Calcifer like made their deal or whatever. I think that's really cool. And another thing that we were talking about um, after watching it that like isn't really explained is like whether Howl and Calcifer remembered Sophie. Mm -hmm. You know, like if they like remembered seeing her so at that point in time. Mind. Yeah, because because mm -hmm. we were also talking about like whether whether how it's kind of ambiguous whether how even remembers sophie from the opening scene of the movie like mm -hmm. you know for him it was just he was out doing stuff and he helped this girl like so does he even remember her when he sees her young when he sees her old does he know it's her like it's never clarified whether he knows it's the well, girl she was like the falling through a hole as she was yeah. screaming at him so i feel like there was a lot going <laughs> they, on he yeah <laughs> and they did see they did see her but yeah it's just like it's never clear like whether he remembers her from his childhood, whether he remembers her from the scene at the beginning, like mm. it's just kind of like left open to interpretation. Yeah. Very like wibbly wobbly, timey wimey <laughs> stuff. <laughs> yeah, we do get the one scene where she's asleep and he like opens the curtain and looks at her and you're like, so he at least knows it's a curse. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or knows something weird is going on. That's what I kept here. wondering to myself. I, Cause she, a few times, like when he shows her the field and stuff with the flowers, she's like slipping in and out of the old lady, younger mm -hmm. face. And I'm like, so is he seeing this or are we oh, meant yeah. to be the only one seeing it? Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, so. Yeah. And I would assume that like, when he saw her as an old lady, he probably knew there was a curse on her. Like he's a powerful wizard. He can probably tell when something is cursed. Yeah. You know, Lucifer could tell she was cursed. Yeah, right away. Yeah. So, so I'm assuming he could probably tell she was cursed. Yeah. From the beginning. Um and I I definitely got the vibe in that scene with like the garden and everything that he could see that she became an old woman because she was putting walls up. That like he was trying to talk more seriously with her. And then she was like, too bad, I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I'm into it. <laughs> <laughs> Canon, how will like wow. older women? <laughs> that took a turn I was not expecting. <laughs> oh, bless. <sighs> yeah, we got Allie in the uh, discussion section is uh, talking about the book a bunch and definitely making a case for me to want to read the book more. <laughs> I want to reread mm -hmm. it now that I've seen the movie because mm -hmm. there's like a lot I do remember. I like I don't remember any of the war stuff though. Like I remember mm -hmm. Turnip Head. I remember her being an old woman and like cleaning up the castle and being like this place is filthy. But yeah, I don't <laughs> remember any of the like really big plot stuff for some reason that didn't stick apparently. Man, yeah. I feel like all the books I enjoy the most. I don't remember the full details. It's just like the impression the that they leave. And, yeah. Um. Yeah. Well, now that <laughs> you all watched this movie, does this make you want to watch more Studio Ghibli movies? A hundred percent. I was looking at like a list of like people's ranking of of them, trying to figure out which one, and I don't know. Mm. I, I know. Wanna... Sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> you go. <laughs> uh, I was gonna say my sister-in-law's favorite movie of all time is Princess Mononoke, so I'm gonna. Do that one next probably i was gonna that say i want to i want to try, try re-watching that because i watched i think about halfway through it and then the weird goo monster things happened mm -hmm. and my sister i think i was like 17 or something and still living at home at the time and my sister was like in the room and made me turn it off because she was so horrified by like the freaky goo things or whatever it was mm -hmm. uh because i think there's like a few kind of like actually gory scenes or something or at least really disturbing scenes in that movie so i didn't get to see the rest of it because my sister's a coward so <laughs> um, that would definitely at least of all the ones that i've seen is definitely the like the most yeah. most <laughs> yeah. of the studio ghibli movies it's, it's a lot yeah along with some of our viewers i recommend spirited away and kiki's mm -hmm. delivery service those are both 
Like Aaron yes. Uter, he's awesome. Alex Unicorn fan in the comments said Kiki's delivery service. Like, yeah, it's so cute. On the broom. Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh, I'm like, I see that everywhere, but yeah. I never knew it was a Studio Ghibli thing. Okay. Yeah. It's adorable. And she has a black cat that's sassy. Okay, so you definitely like it. It's on my list. <laughs> also, I know it's like a little bit longer and a little bit, I'd say more dry, but I really love Nausicaa and the Valley of the Wind. I think that one's really... It's very metaphorical against war and pollution, but it's it's very good. It's very aesthetic. I've seen part of Ponyo, but I don't think I ever finished ah, it. I hate it. No, nope. yeah. I, I once, started and it and I was too many. Kind of bored, so I didn't finish it. I found out later, after I had watched it with some friends who made me watch it, um, that it's supposed to be a take on The Little Mermaid. Mm-hmm. And I was like, yeah. oh, that makes so much sense because it's like mm-hmm. this fish that literally like grows to love this boy so much that it turns into a human. Um, but just the way that they did it is like it's so creepy. Yeah, I didn't even just, get to that point. It's real weird. I even did not the like description, that one. I'm like, no, I'm not on board for this <laughs> human love. No, thing. no, Ponyo. You got some was... Ponyo fans in the discussion section. I know people are like, I love Ponyo. I'm like, nope, sorry guys. No, nope, sorry. So weird. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, hard pass. Um, yeah, hard pass. On the fish love. Oh, no. no, thank you. <laughs> um, one of the things I really enjoyed too was just the animation style. I thought it was very pretty. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. I have a two year old who is not really interested in any TV unless it's Sesame Street. And so, you know, that's a good thing most of the time. Um, but I was watching this and he like walked in the room and just stopped yeah. and like was mesmerized by Aww. this movie. Yay, I'm yeah. so glad he liked it. Very cute. I was like, you're not supposed to be watching TV, but I'm gonna let you watch a little bit of this. <laughs> Cause I'll he was so see, into it. I'll have to see if my small child will be interested in this movie then. Interesting. <laughs> Because yeah, he's he's all, he's on a kick of like not liking anything for more than fifty seconds. Mm-hmm. So maybe I'll try it. Not any of the horrifying ones, just this one. Yeah. <laughs> just the happy ones. Yeah. yeah. Uh, um, I'm just. And uh, we had a question: Does Princess Mononoke have a book? Does anyone know that? I don't I think, think so. so. Original. Never heard of it. Mm-hmm. If it does. I think most of their movies are original stories. Yeah, I can't think of any besides *Howl's Moving Castle* that is also a book. I'm sure there. I'm sure there are. I just that's the I only think, one I know of. I think they did um, *Borrowers*. Maybe. Hmm. I don't know if you ever read that book. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. know. When I was reading the list, that came up. Mm-hmm. I just don't know which one. And Griswold said the animation was the first thing that made me stop and really take notice. Mm-hmm. I agree. <laughs> yeah, it's like, I think it's really nice because it's not quite anime, but it's not quite American cartoon. Like, it's a really nice, um, mm-hmm. like, it's very artsy, and I, I really like that animation style. Yeah, I think that's part of why it's so accessible, is it doesn't quite look as much like anime. Mm-hmm. You know, so if you, like, aren't someone who's into that, it's still, like, a good way to like kind of put your feet in the water. Yeah. Uh, Misty Kate also said to uh, probably to you, Megan, or to you, Aaron, to start your little one with Totoro, my neighbor Totoro, which I completely forgot about. A plus. It's so good. That was the first Ghibli movie that I ever watched when I was like 11. And mm-hmm. I have a, a Japanese cousin and they were like, you know, well, you're bored. Okay, here, watch this movie. And I was mm-hmm. like, oh my God, this is so cool. <laughs> <laughs> cat bus and the little sprites and it's just, it's a very fun movie yeah, i'll write that down too <laughs> <laughs> so many things. Um, going through let us know if there's anything about the movie that you want us to discuss um we'll probably wrap it up relatively soon Mm-hmm. Our our book clubs and movie nights tend to be a little bit shorter than an hour, especially when we love the thing. Yeah, <laughs> when we love the thing. <laughs> nothing to t- talk about too much if we all love it. Mm-hmm. We haven't yeah. talked much about Markle, but like I love Markle; he's adorable. Yes, mm-hmm. him and his old wizard, <laughs> his old wizard, <laughs> <guy>. <laughs> so funny. <Yeah. laughs> 
<laughs> and how he starts oh. off like kind of like terse with Sophie, but then like she becomes like a mother to him. It's so cute. Mm-hmm. Very cute. When he like That's asks her not to leave and you're like, oh. Yeah, he's like, don't leave me, love you. And I went to go say, oh, and then I was like, oh no, I'm going to cry if I say <laughs> it. <laughs> I just love the beard disguise. Like I feel like it's so convenient for like, when you don't want to talk to people. <laughs> or I'd be like, oh, Rachel, Rachel. And then you're like, Fum. I'm sorry, there's no Rachel here. <laughs> Who is that like, old man so voice handy. he does whenever he's wearing it? <laughs> Um, when they're like at the market I don't know it's just like a very good portrayal of like a child that age I feel like because they're like at the market and he's like I don't like potatoes <laughs> I don't like fish like everything she goes to buy he says he doesn't like it there were a lot of like laugh out loud moments mm-hmm. yeah it's quite funny yeah. for sure oh we had a comment from Ryan Skio so discuss Howell and Sophie as a couple I love Howell I love Sophie too, of course, but I just love how when she's like, is he a crow? He can be a crow. Is What else did she say? Is he something? Oh, it's not flamboyant enough. <laughs> I was laughing at that. <laughs> a bird or a seagull or something. Yeah. Not flamboyant enough. And then there was that girl. Yeah, that's yeah. what it was. And then there was a girl like giggling as she was like going over on a hover thing or whatever. He's, she was like, that's more his style. <laughs> <laughs> Which it turns out he is on one of those planes. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> well, she did it well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. It I definitely like is like, happens very quickly with like, I think it's Solomon who's like, oh, you're in love with him. And you're like, whoa, wait. <laughs> yeah. You're like, that was fast. All right. <laughs> but I still, I still love them as a couple. Yeah. <laughs> Later I, in the movie, I definitely buy it more. Right at the beginning, you're like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you know him? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I don't know. I noticed that in actually just a book that I finished reading too, where it's this whole of like, oh, you you love him, do you? And I'm like, y'all have met for like 30 minutes. <laughs> and how come this random person can tell that? Like, I can't tell when unless one of my friends is like, hey, this person is cute. I like them. I'd be like, oh, okay. But like literally, unless someone told me mm-hmm. that they're dating somebody, I would never guess. In this- I've been in rooms full of multiple couples and been like, so who's with who? I <laughs> That it's no, like, this person. Okay, so I'm just. Scene, I can tell why Solomon says it because, like, Sophie's just given this like really passionate like. And she starts looking like herself again. Yeah, and she starts looking young again and everything. Um, but it's like within the context of the whole movie, you're like, her and Hal have interacted like twice. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Everybody in books is super observant, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Immediately knows who likes who. Yeah, I definitely felt like there wasn't much like drama or conflict to them becoming a couple which I kind of liked because I feel like most couples that are gonna last together it's not super tumultuous (laughs) the idea of you two getting together isn't the tumultuous thing and so I really like that I felt like their flaws were complementary and their strengths were as well um so I felt like they definitely both made each other better which I liked a lot I really like the idea of like Howl and her like falling for each other like in a way that like their personalities are compatible and him like obviously he realizes at one point that she has a curse on her and she's not an old woman (laughs) but like the fact that they like would I don't know fall for each other a bit or like really come to love each other's personalities without having that element of like obvious sexual tension at first you know I don't know I just like that as like a relationship developing slowly that way and it's kind of cute when mm-hmm. it does happen eventually, you know. Okay. And in Griswold asked, did the Witch of the Waste curse her randomly or because of her first encounter with Howl? Um, it's because of her encounter with Howl. Mm-hmm. The witch is like jealous, basically. Yeah. Because she like thinks that they're like romantically involved. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just thought like, oh, this witch is like cursed her to be old because she, you know she doesn't like that, or she's being jealous about how little does she know how likes older women. <laughs> <laughs> Such a great movie. Does anyone have any final thoughts on it? I'm excited to watch more Giggly now. Like, I always knew I'd like it until then I had this, like, push of, like, you know you're going to enjoy this. Just do the thing. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I think the issue is getting a hold of it. Like, 
<laughs> we really had to work. Thank you, Emma, by the way, for getting us the movie. Like, it's, you can't stream it on much. Well, you can't stream it on anything, I guess. I don't know about the other ones. I think the end of this month, they're all going to be on the new HBO service. Oh. Mm. So happy for something network else. For <laughs> yeah. Netflix, it's like everywhere except for the US, Canada, and Japan, they're in, on Netflix, but those three countries, they're not. Uh, wait a minute, they're not on Netflix in Japan? Yeah, that does what? seem weird. <laughs> That's I'm not surprised intense. about Canada, because Canada get, just gets nothing. Yeah, we never get anything. <laughs> get ripped off constantly. <laughs> well, it's like Disney distributes it, but it's not on Disney+. Plus. It's, it's all mm, mess. Weird. Weird. It's always so confusing with that type of thing. So yeah, I got so excited because there was like that rumor that went around a couple months ago that it was all going to come to Disney Plus, and uh, no dice. <laughs> Good to laugh. If we do another Ghibli chat, I would like to do Kiki's Delivery Service because that sounds the most exciting to me. <laughs> it's very adorable and very fun, and I agree. <laughs> Maybe sometime we'll have to do like a like that Game of Thrones one that me and Kelly and Emma did. <laughs> Yeah, that would be fun. Oh, that like, one live chat was like two hours long. Yeah. <laughs> well, we didn't go live. We recorded it all together beforehand, and it was like two hours long. <laughs> so long. I'd do it again. <laughs> <laughs> one year later, retrospective. <laughs> what well, is the I'm still angry. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, wouldn't it mostly be ranting? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, that works for some people, right, on YouTube. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm not good enough at coming up with jokes while I'm angry for that to work for me. <laughs> oh. Yeah, so uh thank you so much to everyone who came to our live chat. Um like it says in the description box, we are going to be going on hiatus soon or tonight. <laughs> no, no. We're going on hiatus. Now, what is time? Um Emma is theoretically going to be giving birth at some point during that hiatus. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so be sure to congratulate Emma and tell her how powerful and wonderful she is. <laughs> um, we will be back on June the 14th with your regularly scheduled content. And any, does anyone have any final things to say? all right we'll see you all later thank you so so much for being here don't forget to like and subscribe bye, bye.